What's up, everybody? I think by now, we have all noticed that there is yet another major attempt, currently underway, to suppress our right to do as we please in our supposedly free Western world. Although this time, it's not just about censorship. The powers that be are also taking an even greater shot at grabbing our personal data. We have entities such as the Alphabet Conglomerate, reaching out through Google and YouTube for our government IDs, Discord, now requiring government ID or a face scan, Microsoft, who will allow you to do mobile provider or credit card checks, whatever the hell those mean, and many, many other companies are doing the same thing. It looks like one major data scrape across the board, with many platforms trying to soften the PR blow by using AI age estimation as some kind of a buffer. Now, when they tell us we can't access certain kinds of content without hard identity revealing data, like our driver's license, do you think they immediately store that in some kind of a closed circuit Fort Knox style data center? Absolutely not, right? Because running in parallel with this infringement on our right to freely peruse the internet is yet another massive problem. Data breaches. We've seen this more and more as of late, with shining examples such as the T app, where thousands upon thousands of driver's license photos were leaked. The LexisNexis hack was an even worse example, where over 350,000 social security numbers were stolen. And in October of last year, a Mac Daddy nuclear meltdown dead ringer blunder by a company named National Public Data, aka Jericho Pictures, lost a whopping 2.9 billion records of all kinds. This included social security numbers, addresses, and even criminal records due to the fact that they were a company who performed background checks for employers. It's safe to say that these leaks aren't just becoming more frequent, but also much larger. And the scale of this is coming from the fact that in all sectors of life, things like power, money and information are becoming the same thing and are becoming increasingly condensed. We are seeing that the accumulation of major commodities and assets are exponentially consolidating into fewer and fewer hands. Hands that don't handle your private information with care. This is where technologies like Betanet will begin fighting back. In this video, I will cover what Betanet is, when it may become a reality, and if it does become a reality, how we can effectively use it to combat censorship, privacy incursions, and data insecurity. Let's get into the details of what Betanet is and is not. Although described by some as Internet 2.0, Betanet will not seek to augment or replace the Internet in any capacity. It is more accurately described as a decentralized overlay network. It will route traffic over an alternative infrastructure. Normally, when you are using the internet, the data is sent directly to your internet service provider, abbreviated as ISP, who sends it to a regional network, where it then reaches a backbone provider, who connects regions and even continents with things like huge submarine fiber optic cables, before finally reaching the destination server. What Betanet hopes to accomplish is to reroute your information, encrypted, through a network of volunteer nodes that are simply regular people like you and I. The volunteer nodes will accomplish this by running a lightweight program on their own server or personal computer, allotting any desired amount of the processing power they possess to receive and transmit this encrypted data at random, without any further effort. Here's the logic of how this actually anonymizes you. Let's say you send a request to access information from a web server like Google. Your information will go through three nodes before it reaches your internet service provider. The first volunteer node will see your IP address, but will see completely encrypted information otherwise, and will not know where the information is going. The second volunteer node will not see your IP or your destination, only the IPs of the first and third volunteer nodes and the third node will not know your IP or anything else, only the end destination of the encrypted data. Each node will only ever have strict access to the part of the data packet required to get it to where it needs to go. This kind of overlay network is known as an onion-routed overlay. 
Some people will tell you that this is the same as the Tor network, and while they both use this multi-hop or multi-node routing system as an overlay, which sits between you and your internet service provider, there are two key differences. The first key difference is that Betanet hopes to disguise the information coming from exit nodes as regular internet traffic better than Tor does. If this isn't done effectively, like in the case of Tor, exit nodes can be identified and blocked by internet service providers or even national firewalls, which are implemented by governments within their own borders. The second difference is that Betanet will provide a financial incentive in the form of tokens or micropayments which will be proportional to the processing power you invest as a volunteer node. This concept is very similar to mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. The difference is you aren't mining to solve a block to validate ledger transactions. Instead, you will be acting as a very brief, almost instantaneous, receiver and transmitter of encrypted internet traffic data. This will likely mean a greater number of nodes, which means even greater decentralization, and node dilution, making them even harder to identify as Betanet nodes. So now that we know how it works, let's take a look at where this project currently stands as a functioning product. Now typically, when we hear the prefix beta in the context of any software product, we think of something that is incomplete and is in testing by potential end users. However, calling it AlphaNet may be more appropriate at this time, as it still remains largely conceptual. And that's just another way of saying that there is currently no publicly released software. But within the last week, the project seems to have picked up some major speed and attention. The Raven dev team, the creators of this product, recently released version 1.1 implementation on GitHub, which is a comprehensive outline of the entire project start to finish. They are also posting what I would describe as work bounties which will award up to around $12,000 to the first people who create and submit suitable components as described on their website. Now, I have honestly no idea what any of these components are as they're articulated in very technical jargon, but it shows that the money they are raising is being awarded for large pieces of work being completed. Within the last few days alone, the project has also been receiving lots of attention by the media with Infosec doing a write-up about it, as well as a Reddit post in r slash Rust with 200 likes and quite a bit of discussion. With any luck, this project will be accessible within a year. It's good to see that it is accelerating in its progress when it comes to both development and adoption optics. Now I wanna talk about the role that something like this could play in our society once it's up and running. So just like anything, Betanet has one particular downside. No matter how fast it does get, which will get better as more and more people volunteer, it will still be slower than sending traffic directly to your internet service provider. How much slower? I'm not sure. But for anything requiring very low latency at least, like gaming or browser-based softwares, this will undoubtedly be very cumbersome. So I will say that Betanet will become more of a remedy and not a replacement. I think that this kind of decentralized technology will be used as a weapon by the people to strategically affect change, when the entities who have consolidated enough power to begin pushing us around begin getting a little too pushy like they currently are, we can flip the switch and the script. Hey, I wanna ride yours. <laughs> By entering a decentralized overlay network like Betanet, and rob them of their ability to censor us or take our data. Because when you have highly camouflaged internet traffic coming from all these exit nodes at random, you can't suppress massive amounts of inbound traffic by simply banning a few IPs. This means any ban runs the risk of screwing up real traffic. And when the entities who harvest your data can never collect any kind of meaningful data about you by tying all your searches and posts or whatever back to your IP, they can never paint any kind of consistent picture about who you are. The cool thing is, is that the more people who enter the network, the harder it will be to block the exit node traffic. With more people, the network's capacity will grow massively, the network will be more reliable, and you will become increasingly anonymized. It really is a great concept, if done correctly, because the consolidation of power is really getting out of control. Just think of all the issues going on right now. 
Do you ever notice how everyone in society seems to be entirely focused on just a small group of people and corporations? Whether it's Trump, Biden, Jerome Powell, Elon Musk, Amazon, Walmart, etc, etc. We care way too much about what they do and why they do it because they have far more power and influence than any one person or entity should ever have. And time after time, we see that these people abuse that power and influence in ways that affect us poorly in the short term, but horrifically in the long term. Imagine if we could spread out the decision making when it comes to things like managing our currency, whereas right now, the US dollar is being inflated due to overprinting, which is due to overspending, and is also being used as a weapon in the form of tariffs and sanctions against other countries which makes it less appealing to do trade with us. Those decisions are currently made by a small handful of people, but with cryptocurrency, for example, any decision made has to be agreed upon by a massive number of people. And the best part of that is, is that you have the ability to become one of those people whenever you choose. In this way, I think that decentralized technologies are innately democratic. They are the way of the future, whether it's cryptocurrency, rendering and processing ability, or simply browsing the internet. It's this kind of thing that honestly gives me hope for the future. And I'll say that I'm proud of anyone who fights back against borderline tyrannical behavior like the kind we are currently seeing. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.